Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, true skin health products, ingredients, formulations, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, or if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, we want to hear from you. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. We love talking to our super smart bright side listeners. If you have any questions about the longevity products, or if you want to join the Brightside Ben team, call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. You can enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Work out of your home office if you're an entrepreneur. You can write off your, write off your home office. You can write off your mileage, write off your stamps. Or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price, all for a one-time $25 fee, call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for more info. Or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. You can click on the Join the Team link at the websites, or you can also purchase longevity products off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All right, welcome to, back to the bright side. We have been talking about fats and fatty acids for the last few weeks. The last program, we left off talking about the short fats. Fats come in three sizes, large, medium, and short. The large ones are the dietary fats that most of us think about when we think about fats and fats in our blood and fats on our gut and fats on our butt. They're called the, the long-chain triglycerides, unsaturated or saturated, the two most calm, most famous, I should say. Long chain fatty acids are the essential fatty acids, which are like vitamin fats in the sense that you need to have them. Your body can't make them. All the other fats your body can make. The medium fats, those are found in coconut oil and butter and, and also palm oil. Palm oil is a really interesting kind of oil, although uh, it's got lots of health benefits, tremendous amount of health benefits. In addition to being a great, great source of medium chain fats, it's also one of nature's best sources of vitamin E. Um, there are some issues, however, with palm. Uh, not nutritional issues or dietary issues, but uh, ethical issues in terms of the rainforest. So you might want to be a little bit careful about palm oil. Palm, uh, palm oil is derived from the palm tree, and the palm tree is, grows in the jungles and the rainforests, and there's a whole ethical issues with, with uh, clearing out the rainforest. Uh, you have to make your own decision on that. Nonetheless, palm, does, palm oil is, no doubt about it, a great source of a lot of nutrients. Whether you want to use it or not, that's up to you, but it's a great source of medium chain fats as well as vitamin E. The short chain fat or the short chain fatty acids, there's three of them, are super fascinating. I find them the most fascinating of all the fats, the most common one we talked about on our last program, acetic acid. That's the one that's found in apple cider vinegar. 
or pretty much all vinegars, actually, although apple cider vinegar is the one that we usually hear about. Um, not, not all vinegars are going to be helpful, but there are uh, some forms of vinegar, which is basically a way uh, uh, derived from the fermentation of fruits. Apple cider vinegar, coconut vinegar, various berry vinegars. They have really wonderful sources of a short-chain fatty acid called acetic acid. Acetic acid is just absolutely fascinating, and it really is what accounts for a lot of the benefits associated with vinegars, particularly apple cider vinegar. People have been using vinegars for over 5,000 years. It's been used as a seasoning, as a preservative, as a condiment, and ketchup and mayonnaise and mustard. It's uh, been an additive in various beverages since the days of ancient Sumeria. Ancient Sumerians were the first civilization to record its use. Sumerian recipes were found on clay tablets, clay tablet cookbooks, I guess you could say, dating back to 3000 BC. Sumerians recommended using vinegars for pickling various veggies, including cucumbers and garlic and onions and leeks. Later on, vinegar was referred to in the Bible, in the book of Ruth. Boaz suggests that Ruth enjoys some bread dipped in vinegar. The Greek physician Hippocrates was known to have prescribed the drinking of vinegar to his patients. Julius Caesar suggested that his soldiers drink vinegar as a tonic to, to ward off disease, to keep maintain their, their good health. If you do a search for apple cider vinegar, you're going to find all kinds of benefits associated with this really incredible multifunctional health substance, most especially apple cider vinegar, is recommended for weight loss, for improved blood sugar control, for energy. The active ingredient, as I say in apple cider vinegar, is called acetic acid. And it's the acetic acid, which is a short chain fatty acid that accounts for, I don't want to say most, but certainly a lot of apple cider vinegar's health benefits. Acetic acid is a short-chain fatty acid, and like the other two short-chain fatty acids, it's got a specific chemical shape, a chemical structure that really makes it very interesting. It's got a chemical structure that allows it to bo be both fat-soluble and water-soluble. It's not lipophilic, which is fat-soluble. It's not hydrophilic, which is water-soluble. It's both. We say it's amphiphilic. Amphiphilic meaning both water-soluble and fat-soluble. The most interesting aspect of acetic acid's biological actions involves how the body, well, actually how cells process energy. Acetic acid is part of the chemical, chemical processing, the biochemical processing machinery inside a cell. How energy is produced inside a cell is definitely inside baseball. I'm not going to get into it except to say it is really quite amazing and something we never think about, how cells actually make energy. Nonetheless, acetic acid, the short-chain fatty acid that's found in apple cider vinegar, is a key player in this uh, series of chemical reactions that ends up releasing energy. For you biochemists out there, it's called the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle is a series of biochemical reactions that ends up releasing something called ATP. ATP is known as the cell's energy carrier, and acetic acid is a major player in the process. Just simply put, acetic acid is required for cells to make energy or derivatives of acetic acid. And typically, acetic acid comes into the body from fat and sugar, which then get converted into energy. But you can kind of hack into the system with apple cider vinegar with just acetic acid. Apple cider vinegar or acetic acid shortcuts the process. It provides the body or the Krebs cycle with a source of a, a raw material for the production of energy. The net result is a kind of energy hack for the cells. And this is what accounts in large part for apple cider vinegar's interesting anti-obesity effects. There's, there are other things in apple cider vinegar, and we're definitely going to be talking about them, but the acetic acid and this whole energy production biochemistry is really where you get most of apple cider or much of apple cider vinegar's benefits. In a 12-week study of obese Japanese published in August in the August 2009 issue of the journal Bioscience, Biotechnology, and Biochemistry, researchers found that apple cider vinegar suppressed body fat accumulation. Subjects drank either a half ounce or one ounce of apple cider vinegar as opposed to a placebo and body weight Visceral fat circ uh, weight circumference and blood triglycerides were significantly lower in both vinegar intake groups compared to placebo. And it's not just apple cider vinegar. It's other vinegars, too, that can, have, uh, that can get you some health benefits, particularly weight loss benefits and also anti-diabetes benefits. We'll continue talking about apple cider vinegar's wonderful spectrum of health benefits when we come back from this break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Okay, we are 
we're back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. We will get to your calls here in our next segment, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about vinegars or health challenges you want, uh, you or a loved one may be dealing with, the longevity products, longevity business, or true skin health products, which are all available at truth skin, uh, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Or uh, if you just have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products off, off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website as well. You can also call. 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. All right, so we're talking apple cider vinegar. Vinegar in general, the active ingredient in vinegar, which is acetic acid. If you look on, uh, you do a, a, a web search for apple cider vinegar, you're going to find all kinds of benefits from improving digestive uh, health issues, help for hiccups, sore throat. Uh, it can help relieve sore throats for fatigue, for bad breath, for leg cramps. A lot of this, a lot of the benefits have to do with the acetic acid content, the short chain fatty acid content, but there's lots of other things in vinegar. And it's not just apple cider vinegar. We talk a lot about apple cider vinegar. That's the most well-known of all the vinegars. But if you uh, do a search for coconut vinegar, for example, coconut water vinegar, you'll get a lot of great information from the September 2017 edition of the journal Food, uh, Food Nutritional Research. Dietary coconut water vinegar for improvement of obesity. It was shown that intake of coconut water vinegar significantly reduced body fat, fat pad weight, and blood fats in mice in a dose-dependent fashion. That means the more coconut water vinegar the mice ingested, the more fat they lost. In another study, this one from the July 27th, 2017 issue of the journal Scientific Reports, mice fed both natural and synthetic forms of vinegar, reduced their food intake, had reduced fat deposits, better blood lipid profiles, and reduced obesity, and less inflammation. There's a lot of benefits, folks, from apple cider vinegar, from non-toxic vinegar. Not apple cider vinegar, but non-toxic vinegars. Vinegars can also have liver protection properties. From the BMC Complementary Alternative Medicine Journal, we learned that coconut water vinegar helps protect the liver. Researchers studying mice who were given toxic doses of Tylenol, Tylenol being very liver toxic and overdose, found that, quote, coconut water vinegar helped attenuate Tylenol-induced liver damage by restoring antioxidant activity and suppression of inflammation. Now, a lot of the benefits of apple cider vinegar come from the fact that it's a great source of fiber. If you look at apple cider vinegar in the bottle, it doesn't look like there's fiber. That's because it's soluble fiber. It's the kind of fiber that dissolves in liquid, particularly a soluble fiber known as pectin. We haven't talked about pectin uh, on this program a lot. We will be talking about pectin because it's really amazing stuff. If you've ever made jam or jelly, you know the pectin is used to make your jelly thick, but it's got really wonderful uh, health properties, pectin does. Pectin is important for detoxification. Pectin can help adsorb or magnetically attract toxins out of the body. Pretty much all soluble fibers can do that. Pectin has a swelling effect, and the swelling effect may be what... Uh, accounts for the fact that apple cider vinegar is such a wonderful appetite suppressant, at least partially. The short chain fatty acid acetic acid probably has some appetite suppressant effects, but the pectin also helps. Pectin is found in all fruits, but apples are one of nature's best sources of pectin. Pectin is a polysaccharide, that is it's a long chain of sugars. And apple cider vinegar is a great source of pectin. In addition to the short chain fatty acids, pectin also provides wonderful appetite suppressant benefits. And that's probably, probably has something to do with apple cider vinegar's uh, ability to help reduce body fat and help suppress the appetite. As pectin enters into the intestine, it acts like a prebiotic. That is, it helps feed the probiotics. Probiotics are the bacteria that live in the intestine and prebiotics help feed the probiotics. Pectin is a wonderful prebiotic and gut bacteria the bacteria that live in the colon can actually feed on the pectin and release short-chain fatty acids. 
So you get another mechanism for short chain fatty acids, for increasing short chain fatty acids in addition to the acetic acid that's already in the apple cider vinegar. The pectin in the apple cider vinegar can help you make more short chain fatty acids. Pectin also, as I say, binds to toxins. And this is one, one of the reasons why apple cider vinegar is a great detox substance. In chemistry, one of the major distinctions between chemicals involves what they dissolve in. Short chain fatty acids are so important because they're not fat soluble and they're not water soluble. They're both. They're amphiphilic. They can dissolve in both water and fat. And that makes them really interesting. That allows them to enter into cell membranes quite effectively. It also accounts for a lot of the topical benefits associated with short chain fatty acids. In fact, if you've heard of alpha hydroxy acids, if you're a skincare aficionado, or even if you're not, it's hard, not, hard to have not heard of alpha hydroxy acids. They've been in the news for, oh gosh, since the early 1990s, I first started using alpha hydroxy acids in my skincare business in probably 1992 or 1993. We've talked a lot about alpha hydroxy acids. The most famous alpha hydroxy acid is glycolic acid, and glycolic acid is a derivative of acetic acid. The same acetic acid that's found in, in apple cider vinegar. And for that matter, acetic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid. So not only does acetic acid help you on the inside, it'll help you on the outside too. And that makes apple cider vinegar a really neat skincare product and a cheap one at that. Now it's not, it's probably not as powerful as uh, glycolic acid in terms of its skin benefits. Glycolic acid is slightly more fat soluble than, uh, than acetic acid and the fat soluble nature of glycolic acid makes it a little bit more effective than acetic acid. Nonetheless, if you want a quick down and dirty toner, go to your kitchen cabinet and grab your apple cider vinegar and you can make a nice exfoliating toner. It's a little stinky. You know, apple cider vinegar has that distinct kind of fermented smell, but it's still going to be great for your skin. You can make your own skincare masks with apple cider vinegar and a little bentonite clay. Put some, use some uh, apple cider vinegar as a, as a diluent for bentonite clay. You can make a nice mask and, and make yourself a nice alpha hydroxy acid mask. You can put your, alpha, your apple cider vinegar on a cotton ball and, and use it like a, a kind of to uh, gently scrub off the dead skin off the skin surface. And not only will you be scrubbing off the dead skin, you also get rid of some skin oils if you have acne. But you can also help stimulate the production of collagen, help stimulate the production of new skin cells, help stimulate the production of your natural moisturizers like hyaluronic acid and the so-called natural moisture factor, all for pennies. You can get pretty much the same, well, not the same, but, but along the same lines as, a skin, as the kind of skin care, uh, a skin peel you get from an esthetician at home. Now, you won't probably not get an intense peel. You get a mild peel. If you do it every day, you can help brighten the complexion of the skin, improve acne-prone skin over the long haul, maybe even reduce fine lines and wrinkles. Now, you know, if you listen to this program, I am a big believer in alpha hydroxy acids, topical use of alpha hydroxy acids, whether you use them at home or whether you go to a salon or, or a medi spa and have an esthetician treat you with them. And you probably can't get the same kind of, the same potency or the same powerful effects of a of an esthetician peel or a doctor peel at home, but you can get a mild, mild skin peel, mild exfoliation, mild skin tonic effect with apple cider vinegar. And then of course, you're going to get all of the wonderful minerals, which we will be talking about tomorrow because apple cider vinegar is a great source of calcium, a great source of potassium, probably other minerals in there as well. All right. I'm pharmacist Benny for 42. If you like apple On the bright side, pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about uh, anything we're speaking about here today, fat burning, diabetes, apple cider vinegar, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, health challenge that you want help dealing with, you or a loved one may be uh, dealing with and uh, you need some help with, we're here for you, 844-236-6010. We welcome your calls. We love hearing from you at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Biomimetic Mineral Mist, our Truth Honey Hyaluronic Acid Cleanser, Peppermint Salicylic Cleanser, or any of our Truth Treatment products, go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the Bright Side, head over to our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We'll get your uh, phone calls here in just a moment. A couple stories I want to read. 
This is from uh, do do this is from where is this from? I can't even see where this article is from, but it's interesting. Um, obesity and diabetes, two reasons why we should be worried about the plastics that surround us. How do you like that? Nearly 40% of the United States of United States adults and 21% of youth are obese. Check that out. Just think about that for a second. 40% of us are obese, not overweight, obese, defined as 20 or more pounds, uh, carrying 20 or more pounds more than we should. 40% of U.S. adults and 21% of uh, youth are obese. The trend is on the upswing and world, worldwide population, uh, it, worldwide, the population is becoming more obese, which is increasing the risk of other conditions like type 2 diabetes. Well, guess what? It turns out it may not be just the calories we're taking in and just the food we're eating that's accounting for it. It turns out that it may be plastics. It may be pollutants that are slowing down the body's ability to burn fats. A recent study reveals that something called dibutylene, chemical used in the manufacture of type, a type of plastic called PVC, alters blood sugar metabolism and increases fat storage in mice. There's evidence that shows that rodents who are exposed to these chemicals have a, a reduced ability to burn fat. Last week we talked about using omega-7s to burn fat. It may not be a bad idea to start supplementing with omega-7 fat, omega fats if you're one of those folks who is uh, restricting your calories, who's limiting your calories, but you find that you cannot lose the weight or you cannot lose the body fat. Now, certainly there's other reasons why we can't lose body fat. Uh, cortisol, the stress hormone cortisol, probably pay, plays a role. Nonetheless, we are surrounded with toxicity. We're swimming in an ocean of toxicity not just in plastics, but in food and in water, pretty much everywhere, we, in the air, everywhere we turn, there's toxicity. And that may be conspiring, all these different toxins may be conspiring to make it difficult for our bodies to lose fat. Nothing you could do about the toxins in the environment, we're just pretty much condemned to that, but certainly using supplements like palmitoleic acid, omega-7 fatty acids, or apple cider vinegar, or any of the short chain fatty acids for that matter, or soluble fiber. Now that we're talking about ways to reduce fat, all of these can help reduce body fat concentration and help support fat burning, and it might not be a bad idea. My favorite way to help support fat burning is to reduce cortisol levels, relax the body, keep your sugar down, of course. That also helps lower cortisol. But making sure that you're moving your body and relaxing the body, moving the body on a, getting on, an, on a rebounder or doing some kind of exercise in order to help mobilize fat fat burning, improve lymphatic circulation, and then also relaxing the body to help lower cortisol. That's probably your best strategy for reducing fat storage and help mobil helping mobilize fat burning. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get to one more story and then we'll get your phone calls. This is from the journal Food and Nutrition Research. Glutamine, one of my all-time favorite supplements. Glutamine supplementation improves intestinal cell proliferation and stem cell differentiation in weaning mice. According to this article, the beneficial effects of dietary glutamine supplementation improved the health of the intestine. I've been saying this for years. Glutamine is fuel for intestinal cells. There are some doctors, there are some medical professionals who will tell you not to supplement with glutamine. Some people will believe, some people believe that glutamine feeds cancer cells. Some people believe that glutamine um, may act as an excitotoxin in the brain. Nonetheless, the preponderance of evidence and my personal um, experience shows that glutamine is an incredibly, incredibly valuable supplemental amino acid. Not only is it important for intestinal health, but it's also one of the body's most important muscle building amino acids. If you're bodybuilding, you're exercising, you're weightlifting, you're recovering from surgery, glutamine supplementation might be something you want to think about. You can get glutamine powders pretty readily off the internet. Glutamine's found in whey protein. It's found in pretty much all high protein foods, but I like supplementing with this powdered glutamine. One of my favorite benefits of glutamine is it helps wean you off sugar. If you're one of those folks who crave sugar, using a teaspoon of glutamine every morning or maybe half a teaspoonful twice a day of glutamine, just put it in water and drink it. It doesn't have any taste. You can put it in your smoothie. It can help you reduce your sugar cravings because glutamine can actually be used by cells for producing energy. Glutamine, wonderful supplement, and it's also pretty darn cheap, too. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Bob in California. Good morning, Bob. Welcome to the Bright Side. 
Hello, Ben. Enjoy Hello, your Bob. show since I've just recently found it. I've heard you on the radio on different uh, shows and finally finally found you on GCN. No, oh, nice. I hope you're enjoying. So, anyhow, what my problem is, is my wife had her gallbladder taken out about six months ago, and uh, it seems to, I, I'm suspicion, you know, I'm suspicious that maybe it has slowed her digestion down. Well, you're, that's a good that's a good guess considering the gall, that's a good guess considering the gallbladder is a major digest, digestive structure. How old is your wife? First of all, about uh, she is fifty two. And what was going on that she had her gallbladder taken out? Uh, she had a stone that was, I think, like one point seven centimeters. When they got the thing out, they gave it to her after the surgery. Thing was the size of a almost the size of a ping pong ball. Oh my God! It well, that's she. At that point, you really, at that point, you really don't have an option. She yeah, must have been because we, we tried, we tried everything under the sun. I talked to Doctor Wallach, and he told me some things that she could try to take, but well, that stone wasn't cut. There, you weren't going to yeah. reduce the size of that stone in in six months or a year. It Did probably took ten years, maybe. Yeah, no, that's that's so, a big stone. Did they tell you about? Uh, did they tell you about using sound waves, or have you heard about using sound waves to, to dissolve stones? I've heard stone? of that with kidney stones to break the stone up. Yeah, exactly. They could do it with yeah. gallstones too. Uh, yeah, so it's out. If the gallbladder's out. It's out. There's not much. You know, obviously, you're not going to put it back right, in. Now, so, right. so, so here's the stories that they. I hear stories that they re- reconnect the duct that goes to the gallbladder into your intestine. Yeah. To uh, is that? Yeah, do they actually do that, or they? they well, do, there's a or duct. They just cut it off. There's a duct that goes from the liver into the intestine that will that'll get her some some bile. Uh, so it's not like she's right. going to be completely without bile, but she's going to be her, her significant her bile secretion is going to be significantly reduced, and that's going to wreak havoc on her digestive health, and it will absolutely slow down the digestive system. So for the rest of her life, she needs to take very close attention to the digestive system. But here's the issue. The reason she had the gallstone in the first place is because she had digestive problems. So she already had a a messed up digestive system. Now all you've done is compounded the problem. So if you have a gallbladder issue and you have gallstones, you've got to regard it as a sign that you're not digesting your food properly or you're eating the wrong kinds of food. Gallstones are the end result of digestive health issues, and it's very important. I'm not saying that for you, Bob. I'm saying that for anybody listening who's considering having a gallbladder removed. Focus on digestive health. Bob, I'm going to give you some advice and some ideas, and it's very important that she pays very close attention to her digestive health for the rest of her life. So don't go away, because we'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010. We are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben talking to Bob in California. Bob, you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so number one, for anybody considering having a gallbladder removed or anybody with gallbladder problems, consider it to be a digestive health issue. Clogged, sticky bile is the end result of toxicity that enters into the digestive system, along with drugs. That probably doesn't help. Uh, prescription drugs have to, that have to be cleared out by the bile system. We've been, we talked about that a few months ago, about estrogen and about bile and about toxicity in bile. So it's basically a bile toxicity issue. The major source of bile toxicity is going to be foods. If you have uh, a tendency to form stones or history of stones, regard it as food to- f- an issue that involves food, di- uh, food intolerances or digestive, uh, digestive health issues in general. Use probiotics, use fiber. Uh, avoid food toxins or food allergens. Those are the ways you prevent the formation of stones. Once you have a gallbladder removed, and also, by by the way, digestive enzymes will also help uh, clear out bile, particularly our ultimate enzymes, which contain lecithin and bile acids in them. However, once you have a gallbladder removed, now it becomes extra super duper important that you support the bile system. Absolutely 100%, not, you, it, without a doubt, this is the number one most important health strategy that she needs to practice for the rest of her life. That is, use her, her ultimate enzymes with, with meals, two or three with meals, and then some apple cider vinegar with the ultimate enzymes to help activate the enzymes. I would be getting extra bile acids. And you can get that at a health food store. There is some bile acids in the Ultimate Enzymes, but I would add it in some extra bile acids. I would also be taking lecithin, 
uh, with all her meals. Again, there's some lecithin in the ultimate enzymes, but you might want to use some extra lecithin. The amino acids taurine, T-A-U-R-I-N-E, and glycine can help. I would also be using uh, at, uh, her ultimate EFAs. In fact, just get on the whole healthy start pack. She's going to have a problem absorbing or taking advantage of fat-soluble vitamins and f essential fatty acids. So focusing on vitamins A, D, E and K, in addition to her ultimate EFAs, she should probably be, probably be using 20,000 IU a day of vitamin A, uh, 400 IU a day of vitamin E, making sure she's getting lots of sunshine for her vitamin D, and perhaps uh, uh, cod liver oil or fish liver, cod liver oil probably. Uh, and then also, uh, it would be a good idea for her to get some vitamin K, maybe 1,000 or so, maybe 2,000 micrograms of vitamin K2. Also, she should be on her ultimate nightly essence probiotics. There's a major relationship between gut bacteria and gut health and bile and the liver for that matter. And then also it wouldn't would probably be a good idea to uh, make sure she's using soluble fiber. She may end up with a little, if she's not already, she may end up with some diarrhea or loose stools uh, and soluble fiber can help slow down uh, the movement of uh, nutrients through her intestines so she can absorb her, her minerals in particular. Uh, also, uh, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine can be helpful. Uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine water has a little acidifying effect, so make sure she uses her Beyond Tangy Tangerine and all her fatty nutrients with meals. That's a ton of information. I know you can go back to the archives, benfuchsarchives.com, if you want to review that. Yeah. Anything else, Bob? Yes, I know how to find that. I have one more question, and that is the fact that we think that she's got a high hernia. Hi hiatal hernia, okay. where they put That's... the camera in, put the camera in around the belly button area. Ha have her see a chiropractor. And I heard doctor. Yeah, go ahead. You heard doctor. Yeah, I, oh, well, okay. Yeah, the chiropractor thing. I heard. I heard that chiropractors can do an adjustment to reposition yeah. the stuff. I did put the blocks of wood under the top of the bed, two by fours, to raise her up this last night. I got. I heard that on Doctor Wallach, Tim talking about that. So that's uh, what I would. I would have her. Any I would have other? Him, yeah, no, I would have it manipulated. I would not do surgery if I, unless it was a last resort. And by the way. Uh, get her on some connective tissue building supplements after post-surgery. Uh, adhesions can form, adhesions commonly form post-surgery, and that can cause more misery. So have her use either our connective tissue or collagen repair complex, which you could find at truthtreatments.com uh, truth or, or collagen supplements or, for that matter, a bone broth protein or the glucogel caps from Longevity. Bob, I want to motivate, okay, yeah. my friend. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Hope we helped you out. Susan in Texas, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Susan, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's going on? How can we help you, Susan? Um, I pretty much have the same situation where actually tomorrow I'm supposed to have gallbladder surgery. You have a stone? Um, I have a very large stone. I don't know how large it is, but to them it's very large. Uh, are you in pain? I've been, um, only after I eat, my neck was hurting me really bad. And it would come up to the left side of my neck. And I started kind of changing the way that I was eating, so I started feeling better. Um, but I've noticed that, like, I have a lot more gas and I belch more. And um, depending on what I eat, my the pressure will come to my neck and then I'll have to belch and it makes me feel better. Uh, if I were you, I would avoid the surgery if, if possible. Uh, just, mm -hmm. It sounds like you're working on it with food. That's probably the best way. You might want to try the shockwave therapy. Ask your doctor about okay. that and see if that works. Surgery is definitely a last resort. Now, again, if you're in complete misery and complete pain, you might not have an option. But, but I certainly would do everything I could do to avoid the surgery if I were you. That's just my advice. Okay. Make sure you, just everything we just talked about. Make sure you're using your ultimate enzymes with meals, avoiding problem foods. It sounds like you're you're on the right track though without surgery. And if you can avoid the surgery, uh, that's really the best way to do it. You might want to look into or ask your doctor or just do some research on the shockwave therapy. Okay, and that okay. would be like the gastroenterologist that talks about that. Uh, see if he knows anything about it. You might want to. He may not know about it, but you might find a uh, you might find an alternative practitioner practitioner who knows about it. Um, not all patients are, are uh, suitable for uh, shockwave therapy, but you may be, and if you are, then that's definitely, that's what I would do rather than, than having them cut you open and removing an organ. 
Yeah. Hot bladder is an organ in the okay. body. You don't want to remove organs of the body unless it's unless yeah. it's uh, last resort. Yeah. All right, Susan, I'm going to let you go. Okay. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Noel in Illinois, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Uh, Pharmacist Ben, always good hearing from you, sir. Uh, I'll be Thank brief. You. Uh, I'll be brief. Um, experiencing muscle twitches on the fingers. Sometimes when I lay in bed, my feet twitch involuntarily, and I'm also okay. experiencing a little bit stuttering as well. I'm a broadcaster, so when I start to notice that, I start That's to get worried. Uh, I, uh, Coke, Coca Cola is where my cigarettes. I'm weaning off of that. I was about uh, to ask you I, if you were a caffeine drinker because caffeine can uh, definitely do that. I was going to ask you that. So, how so much Coke are you I, drinking? Um, <laughs> no, uh, a shame to admit, just uh, you know, a couple, couple a day. Okay. Uh, okay, so that can I'm, definitely I'm do it. Off of that. I, I, that can definitely do it. Um, do you notice it gets worse right after you drink the Coke? Um, I start to feel it, especially as I've weaned off, if I, as I tried to wean off and like I try, uh, had like maybe one or two again. I, I start to feel it again. Yeah. Yes, I, I would say that has something to do with the caffeine. In the meantime, you may want to start using some B vitamins, high doses of okay. B vitamins, and high doses of electrolytes. Of course, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is the, the perfect supplement for both high doses of B vitamins and high doses of electrolytes. It sounds like an electrical conductivity issue. Uh, anytime you have twitching, you want to think about electricity, and the B vitamins and your electrolytes are your electrical nutrients. Essential fatty acids are not going to give you a, 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 a give you quick results. It takes a while for those to, for benefits to show up, but uh, within three or four or five days, you should notice some benefits. So maybe get on the ultimate EFAs, high doses, nine a day, three capsules, three times a day. Uh, and that's my recommendation would be the B vitamins, and also by the way, the caffeine. And for that matter, the sugar in the Coke can cause you to lose some of those electrolytes in the B vitamins. So in addition to being deficient because you're not getting them, you may become deficient because you're losing them. What do you broadcast, by the way? Uh, I'm a play-by-play -play announcer, so college basketball, oh. Uh, football. Oh, that's so awesome. I, for yeah, who? so I, so I know um, uh, locally in Chicago. Uh, oh, that's a, awesome. Small, a, a, a Division One uh, small school in the south side of Chicago. Why don't you, as you're weaning yourself off the Coke, replace it with the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and see what happens. And that okay. can also, and before you go to bed, sometimes the BTT will give you energy. You may not want to do it before you go to bed. Uh, but if you, if you don't get a buzz from it, uh, try to sip on a little BTT before you go to bed. Also, magnesium in particular has a nice calming effect. And that may, uh, you may benefit from magnesium supplementation, either through the OsteoFX or just straight magnesium supplements. Again, the caffeine and the sugar, in addition to causing a loss of B vitamins and causing a loss of electrolytes, can also cause a loss of magnesium. So you may be suffering from just a, uh, either caffeine issues or nutritional deficiency, electrolyte or B vitamin deficiency issues. That would be the, where I would focus if I were you. Last but not least, slow, deep, rhythmic breathing can have a nice calming effect. And that may also uh, improve any issues with stuttering. Uh, and the, the caffeine and the, uh, and the sugar can spike your cortisol. So you may also be dealing with a cortisol issue. So SDR breathing after you drink your Coke or instead of drinking the Coke or before you go on the air can have a nice calming effect too. Thanks, Noel, for uh, your call. You, Appreciate it. Man. Have a beautiful day and uh, great hearing from you. Thank you for your call. And thank you to everybody for listening to The Bright Side. That's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.